I'm Duncan McLeod, and this is Tech Central. I'm joined now by Giovanni Chiarelli, Chief Technology and Information Officer at MTN South Africa, to talk to him about the company's launch today of its 5G network. Giovanni, it's good to see you. Uh, firstly, where is MTN's 5G coverage available, and why did you decide to launch in those particular areas? Yeah. Hi, Duncan. Thank you for, for inviting me to the podcast. So today uh, is, is, is a big day for us. So it means that the work that we started two years and a half ago with the first uh, live test uh, in, in Johannesburg of 5G network is, is coming to, to, to the light. So we have started the, the rollout uh, and obviously it was uh, really supported by the allocation of the temporary spectrum. Yes. Uh, yes. Prior to that, we did uh, already some um, enhancements uh, on on the uh, on the spectrum sharing opportunity that 5G has. But now we are talking about a, a launch that is on the 3.5 gigahertz, so the golden band. And in fact, in our coverage maps, first of all, is announced this week. So today we have deployed uh, in uh, in four ways in Brainstone, in uh, Honeydew in the in the Johannesburg area, and then uh, we have deployed in uh, in Bloemfontein in the university universitas area, mm -hmm. and uh, and in uh, in in Cape Town. So these are the first three cities uh, where we have uh, the five G the three point five gigahertz. At three point five G. Yeah, but at the same time, we wanted also to 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 go on with the, with the other opportunities in the other bands. Yeah, and as you know, we had also temporary spectrum allocation on the 700, so uh, we chose uh, some towns uh, out of which uh, Port Alfred, uh, Queenstown, for example, Virginia, in which we have deployed uh, the the 700. Obviously, different use cases, more. On the on the coverage and low latency uh, opportunities mm -hmm. is offered from from uh, 5G, um, and then um, our our journey is also going on on the 28 gigahertz, yeah, where we have uh, historically spectrum, but it's it's quite busy due to the microwave installations yes. that we yes. have around the country, that are mostly serving uh, enterprise customers, but. We have found some good spots in where where it possible it was possible to deploy. So, for example, we have deployed in Hatfield, we have deployed in Edenvale, uh, and we have deployed also in Durban, yeah, uh, on the 28 gigahertz. And and last but not least, as I was saying, uh, we are still very very interested uh, to understand better all the opportunities in terms of uh, dynamic spectrum allocation and coexistence of of 4G and 5G. The reason why we have deployed uh, 5G in this uh, in this fashion uh, in two clusters. One is uh, surrounding the area where I am, so the uh, Fairlands area uh, close to our campus, and the second area is uh, in Sandon CBD surrounding the Michelangelo Tower. Oh yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Giovanni, you mentioned 700 megahertz. Um, I think you said Port Alfred. Uh, you've deployed at uh, 700 and Port Alfred. Is that correct? Correct, correct. Okay. So we have the first site on, on air live there. Obviously, there you cannot uh, expect uh, the huge performance in terms of speed. Yeah, because definitely that layer is mostly a layer of, of coverage. Coverage, uh, yeah. Uh, very efficient, uh, obviously, coverage. Uh, and uh, and definitely, in any case, obviously, good, uh, good latency mm. uh, due to the nature of, of 5G. So... But I think uh, in, at this stage where we have still uh, this big question mark about uh, the, the spectrum allocation for us is also very important to push uh, on the commercial aspect for sure, but on the other side also on the technical aspect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm particularly interested, sorry, Giovanni, in uh, the 700 megahertz band because obviously that is one of the digital dividend bands and we still have broadcasters using the spectrum at seven and 800 megahertz. Um, I presume that precludes you from, from rolling out uh, 700 megahertz more uh, broadly, particularly in the cities because of concerns about uh, clashing with uh, the frequencies used by analog television broadcasters. Um, was Port Alfred a, a unique situation where, they, where, they, where there was no television broadcasting in that particular band? Correct, correct. So we found obviously few few spots. Uh, it, Obviously, what we have done, first of all, as soon as we got the news that uh, the, the spectrum was allocated on that band uh, to, to us as well, 
Uh, so we did the desktop exercise uh, based on the uh, positions where the broadcasters are transmitting. Uh, and second, we did also a drive testing, which confirmed uh, uh, almost the, the same results. Mm -hmm. In essence, uh, the 700 and the 800, because at the end they leave the same uh, unfortunate destiny for the moment, uh, yes. are, they said, are severely interfered, especially in the, in the, in the big urban area, mm -hmm. yeah, where it's impossible. So if you think about the urban uh, Joburg, uh, uh, Cape Town, it's impossible to deploy anything as of now. So the, uh, the digital migration has to happen in order to free up the frequency. But at the same time, we were looking at some sweet spots and we found a few of them. So potentially in, uh, in towns and small towns, uh, there is uh, some opportunity, but uh, I would say some approach, not yeah. more than that. Und understood, understood. So uh, what sort of speeds have you been getting uh, through uh, your 5G network? Um, we uh, watched the launch this morning, of course, and uh, we were seeing five, five, six, seven hundred megabits per second on the downlink. Um, but what, what are the average real world speeds that you're seeing on both down and up? So I think that's, that's obviously a, a, a live demo. Uh, mm -hmm. Then obviously looking at the other tests, for example, yesterday, in, in Bloemfontein, uh, we were above 1.15 gigabits a second in downlink. Mm -hmm. um, and there is, a, as, as we announced, we have worked already with all our technology partners. So if you think about the footprint, obviously core network has to be, had to be upgraded and Ericsson was really instrumental on, on that. And then vice versa for the access network is, uh, is Huawei, Ericsson and ZT. So mm -hmm. all of them. And, uh, and now there is also a little bit of a competition between, uh, between the different uh, technology partners. So yesterday there was this WhatsApp uh, picture from, from Bloemfontein with the Ericsson guys, obviously, <laughs> really obviously uh, being ahead of, of the curve. I'm expecting that in the next few days uh, somebody else will try to, to pass them and so on. But I think it's a healthy competition from, from this perspective. We are yes. pleased about it. About okay. okay. Now, Giovanni, what happens yeah. when you have to hand back this temporary spectrum uh, that ICASA has assigned during the COVID-19 state of disaster? My understanding is that spectrum is probably going to have to be handed back by the end of November. Um, do you expect that ICASA will allow you to continue using the spectrum in question until after the auction? I think this is a really um, unforeseeable, so we don't know what is happening. Mm -hmm. um, so, as you correctly said, uh, uh, the spectrum was granted under the condition that was uh, to be returned 90 days after the state of emergency uh, revoked, mm -hmm. yeah, or uh, worst case scenario, by the end of November. Yeah, so in theory, uh, in practical terms, uh, the, the, the end of November is the maximum limit for, for this. Um, as, as Godfrey mentioned also in the live broadcast, we are very actively uh, working uh, with ICASA uh, in order to see if, if there is a solution. Obviously, I think the primary road is, uh, uh, the primary avenue is to have the spectrum option uh, very, very soon in order to bridge the gap and to have, in essence, no gap between the end of November and what can be a, a, a permanent allocation of, of, of the frequency. Yes. This is yes. the main road, I would say, as of now. Um, the alternative is, is quite devastating because apart from the innovation of 5G, uh, now we are rolling out also 4G on 2600 megahertz, which is also another band that has been given in the, in the temporary spectrum. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that is, is even impacting more if, it's, if it has to be returned because there it's not just uh, the first few customers that want really to enjoy the 5G, but is uh, it's massive in terms of adoption. So, yeah. you know, more, by far more than half of our customers uh, in terms of data customers are on 4G. So if, if we need to, to, to return that band, uh, the 2600, it means we will have congestion, mm -hmm. significant congestion in, mm -hmm. in some areas. And the only alternative is to, to build uh, a second site in the same area, which is super expensive. expensive and yeah. 
So given the uncertainty and the fact that you don't know whether there's going to be a gap between handing back the spectrum and getting access to spectrum through the auction, uh, does MTN therefore need to um, proceed very cautiously in terms of its uh, rollout of 5G? Are you going to um, are you going to put a halt on it now that you've got 100 high sites and wait until the auction before you continue to, to roll out, or are you going to continue to roll out 5G high sites in the interim? So yeah, obviously it's it's a it's a it's, it's a fine balance between uh, the, the the two um, the two elements. So we think uh, from now on, uh, probably what can happen is still related to the dynamic spectrum sharing, because obviously there we are talking about bands yep. that have been uh, allocated to us in a in a in a permanent way. But looking at the 3.5 and the 700, <clears throat> it will be very small scale. Mm -hmm. from, from now until there is a, a clear visibility of what, what, what is, uh, what is yeah. going to happen. And once the auction has happened, the rollout is going to ramp up massively. Yeah, definitely, because uh, on, on this also, the preparation has happened in, in a good part. So starting from last year, we started modernizing the access network in order to make it uh, 5, 5G ready. And now it's just a matter of, uh, of uh, uh, deploying the, 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 the new antennas uh, for 5G and the radio unit. But the rest, uh, starting from the base yeah. bands and so okay. on, is, is, already, is already there. Okay. Yeah. And I'm imagining it probably doesn't matter too much because there are very few 5G capable devices in the market right now. Um, and it's probably going to take, I'd imagine, a couple of years at least for there to be any sort of um, mass market take up of 5G smartphones? Yeah, I think uh, probably you, you will see the same um, uh, adoption in terms of curve uh, that we have seen in 4G, but by far accelerated. So if, if, you, if you go back uh, and if you look at uh, what was uh, one year ago, the forecast in terms of devices and the range of bands uh, that they were suitable for and so on, uh, now we have seen the time has reduced to half. So I think acceleration is coming. And if you consider uh, obviously 3.5, definitely golden band, no, no doubt on that. But now you, you see also, for example, in the Far East, 2600 is becoming predominantly a 5G band, more even than, than 4G as well. And, and in Europe, uh, yeah, the first launches of the dynamic spectrum, for example, in the Netherlands. Uh, I think uh, there is plenty, plenty of, of opportunities from this perspective. Yeah. I, I guess once Apple releases its iPhone this year, which is going to be a 5G, its first 5G iPhone, uh, that will spark a lot of interest amongst consumers and uptake of uh, 5G services. Yeah, correct. Is uh, so iPhone 12, by the way, is announced uh, to to have obviously also the the capability of the dynamic spectrum sharing, for example, on 2100. Okay. Um, that's that's the reason why, as we said, we want to to progress uh, from from this perspective. In any case, on the dynamic spectrum. Okay. Um, yeah. Apart from obviously 3.5 and so on, so I think it will be definitely an impressive impressive device. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, I, I saw a very interesting article uh, the other day about um, Vodafone in the UK working uh, with Ford, the car company, to build a private 5G network at their facility. I think it's in Essex uh, in the UK to speed up the production of electric batteries. Um, has MTN had any discussions with uh, corporate clients about potential opportunities for doing similar things? What, what is your view of this construction of private 5G infrastructure? Yeah, so that definitely is one of the use cases. In, in reality, um, uh, you can say the discussions with the customers, some of the customers started some time ago, and at the time we were still talking about uh, private LTE, so private 4G mm -hmm. network in there. Um, in the in the in the areas of interest, uh, the, especially with the with the mining industry, there, there have been several talks uh, uh, around that. Uh, and by the way, I was really really amazed to to hear that in some of the mines we are still communicating through walkie talkies and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely, we started already the topic with them uh, when we were on the still on the 4G wave the LTE wave and now obviously the, the 5G is, is giving even more opportunities. 
uh, definitely due to the lower latency and the higher reliability. So I think for industrial applications, definitely that's that's now the de facto standard. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, last question before I let you go, Giovanni. Um, uh, MTN is obviously going to be participating actively in the Spectrum auction, which uh, is scheduled, as you mentioned, to happen before the end of the year. Um, you won't only be bidding in that auction for 5G suitable spectrum, but also for 4G LTE su suitable spectrum. And in fact, South Africa has never formally allocated spectrum specifically for 4G networks, which I remember when we first spoke, soon after you were appointed to MTN, you were expressed your absolute amazement that South Africa still hadn't allocated uh, 4G. Um, so uh, getting access to additional 4G spectrum, which will probably remain the way most people connect to the internet through mobile devices for many years to come. Um, what, what, will, what will the impact be of getting that additional spectrum be on your 4G network in terms of performance and coverage? Yeah, so that definitely it's crucial, mostly for capacity reasons. So, so today we are at 96% of uh, LTE population coverage. So from a coverage perspective, uh, apart from the digital dividend that you were mentioning before, I don't think there is uh, much. To do. Yeah. Now it's, it's a matter of, of capacity and a matter of delivering capacity at an affordable cost. Okay. Yeah. Which is the new challenge. Obviously, all of us have seen the prices dropping in the last mm. six months. Uh, Big announcement from from us, from our competitors, based on the uh, all, all the, all the uh, let me say triggers that came from from the resilience. Mm -hmm. so, so you are reducing significantly the 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 the, 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 the price. You need uh, in part to reduce significantly the cost of production. That's that's very clear. It's a very simple equation. So. The only way to do that is, is to have access to additional spectrum. So you can just deploy new radio units. And obviously you need to, obviously to, to do a good capacity planning in our transmission, mm -hmm. but you don't need to build the second site, which is adjacent to the first one, yeah. just because yeah. you have not capacity anymore in the existing spectrum beds. So it's, it's a cost that is uh, three times less approximately or even more. Yeah. So by far uh, cheaper, second, by far faster, yeah? Because uh, as we know, in order to build the new site, you take six to nine months, mostly for permit reasons, yeah? yeah. Uh, the permits are taking long. Uh, vice versa, if you have already the site and just you need to, to, to deploy new radio units, eh? it's a matter of your supply chain, yeah? Eight weeks, 12 weeks, maximum, really maximum is time. Yeah, so it's faster and cheaper, and that's the way obviously the, that we have seen in, in other countries. And yeah. we say, why not? So yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. Well, I, uh, Giovanni, I'm pleased to say that I am in a MTN 5G coverage zone, so I look forward to, to trying wow. it out in, in the coming days. Um, uh, so I look forward to that. Congratulations on your launch of 5G today. Uh, Giovanni Chiarelli is Chief Technology and Information Officer at MTN South Africa. Thank you, Duncan. All the best.